right? No, you know what kind of articles we need on the website? We need more articles about our next guest. We had an article up there about them. I think last week their press release came out. Let's welcome to the show. I, she is the one and only. She's the one and only. She's the head of the Cherry Bombs. She's Miss Alicia Dove. Alicia, how are you? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. How, I guess you better be pretty freaking excited, huh? Going on tour with Stone Sour and Steel Panther? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Just get me there. Get ready. <laughs> so, you know, so this ready. is like a whole, a whole wild thing. Like, I'm sitting there today. I'm going through all the Cherry Bomb stuff. And, you know, I find out, like, I, I, I guess was your, your first real professional job in dancing was being a cheerleader, was it? Or was that, like, your first claim to fame? Yeah, um, well, I wouldn't say it was my first professional dancing job. It was definitely more my claim to, I wouldn't call it fame by any means, but I, you know, pseudo quasi fame, whatever. Um, yeah, I was a cheerleader for the Atlanta Falcons in 2010, 11, and 12. So, um, yeah, and, and then I left the cheerleading uh, industry, I guess you could call it, the NFL, to start my own group, which is um, the birth of the Cherry Bombs. That's wild. Now, like, how is it going, like, from in front of 60,000 crazy football fans to being in a, like, either a small rock club or, you know, in front of a 10,000, you know, rocking fans? I mean, it's got to be a big difference. It's different, definitely, um, just in kind of different ways. Um, when you're in a football stadium, you got, you know, you're surrounded by fans everywhere you look. You're in a giant stadium, right? Um, when you're in a rock show or concert or club, um, you're on a stage and everybody's just staring at you. When you're in a football game, people are watching the game. You're there, um, right. and certainly they're looking at you too, but you're not necessarily the focal point. When you're performing at a, a rock concert, like with one of our shows, we are it. We're the only thing on that stage. So it definitely feels a little more intimate, not just in size, but also just the focus and the attention being on you on a stage. Um, but it's kind of cool, too, because while it may be a little bit smaller, you know, those people are coming to check you out. So you're not just like, I used to call it the fluff, like we were the fluff of the football team, you know. Um, right. And now now we're an actual, like, standalone act, so. It's very different, but equally just as cool, just in totally different ways. How did this whole thing come together? I mean, because this, this is your baby. You put this whole thing together. Yeah, this is my baby. Um, so when I left cheerleading, I decided that I wanted to keep performing. I wanted to keep dancing professionally. I just wanted to make more money doing it. Um, so I don't know if you've heard any any of the stuff going on with the cheerleaders and the NFL organizations and the lawsuits because they're underpaid, that kind of thing. Um, but I just wanted to do it my way. I didn't want to dance to Katy Perry anymore. I <laughs> wanted to dance to just rock and roll or metal music. That's what I'm passionate about. And um, so I said, fuck it, I'm just going to do my own thing. And I took a bunch of girls that retired off of the cheerleading team with me, and oh, cool. we did our very first gig, yeah, in uh, Sturgis, South Dakota, which is the world's largest motorcycle rally. And uh, ever since then, it just kind of kept growing and growing and growing, and people were like, holy shit, this can be a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I guess, too, like, with the whole cheerleader thing, like, I think people seem to forget, too. It's, I mean, first off, you guys aren't paid like NFL players. And second off, I mean, especially if you guys don't make the playoffs, I mean, what do you get, like 10 games out of the year? Yeah, so we would have 10 home games. Um, and we would, yeah, people just assume if you're on a football field in the NFL that you're making millions, and that's definitely right. not the case. Uh, we got paid $75 a game. Um, Holy shit. And, yeah, um, and, but, too, you know, you knew that going in. So you know that straight up front, and you have to be okay with that when you sign up for that year-long contract, which I certainly was. Um, and, granted, the, the experience was priceless, and the things I got to do were amazing. You know, I got to go to Kuwait and Djibouti and, and perform for the troops and 
do these amazing hospital visits and see kids and, you know, just really like get involved in the community and give back to our, our men and women in uniform. So definitely you, that was completely worth it. But yeah, you don't make a lot of money at all. Um, and uh, there was a lot of rules to follow, which I'm not very good at either. <laughs> and um, I, yeah. And then it, when it was time, it was time. Holy cow. So like, uh, like, uh, did they pay you like for appearances? And I don't mean like going to a hospital and all that stuff. I mean, like if they send you to like a car dealership or something like that, were you getting paid for any appearances like that? Um, yeah, there, there was chances where you make your money. And in, in, in that is um, you do like, uh, like corporate appearances, which don't come on, uh, along too much but mostly a lot of charity work. So like my rookie year, I did like 60 charity appearances, all non-paid. Um, oh. But of course you can write things off like your mileage and, and, sure. and all that good stuff. But, um, but you're required to have a full-time job or be a full-time student when you're a cheerleader anyway. So it's not meant to be your, your only means of income. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but it was that job in particular was just more fulfilling and it opened up a lot of doors, you know? Sure, sure. And it, yeah. it basically, it looks great on the resume. Yeah, absolutely. Like now, like, okay, yeah, we look really wild and crazy and, like, we're these crazy-ass heathens. But, you know, with my background, you know, we're going to show up on time. You know, we're going to, like, come looking presentable. We're not going to be looking all messy and crazy. We're not going to be sloppy <laughs> on you. We might drink a little bit, but we're not going to be sloppy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like that. It's like we're like professional heathens. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hiring? <laughs> Come on, get your Let's go. <laughs> so now, Always now with the whole uh, <laughs> with the cherry bombs, like, is do you have like, um, is it a set amount of girls? Like when you're going on tour, I guess there'll be like six of you. Is, is yeah. it five or six of you? When we go on tour, there'll be seven of us. Okay. So I'm coming with a wolf pack. We're coming yeah. with a wolf pack. Now, have you had, coming like... with a wolf pack. Have you gone through, like, issues with member changes and stuff like that over the, over the years? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't lock my girls in forever and ever. They're, they're certainly free to come and go. Um, but, I, you know, you sometimes, as with any group, um, you get some kind of bad apples in there, and then you get ones that come in and stick through it. Uh, for years and years, so, and especially, you know, with girls, it can be a little tricky sometimes, um, but I have to say right now, the group that I have right now is fucking amazing, like, I have, I'm so grateful, we have a staff team, and I cannot wait for everybody to see this on the road, because this fucking group is phenomenal, I mean, like, beast, just super cool. Now, how did you guys, like, uh, and the, the dancing is one thing. I, I, like, okay, you can dance. We know this. But, you, I mean, you guys take it to a whole new level. I mean, you guys are, like, flying off the ceiling, uh, through the air. There's fire involved. Like, how, how did, you, like, did you, like, already start doing that stuff when you were a cheerleader? Like, how did all this stuff come to be? So, no. Um, so, originally, we first started, when we very first formed, we had a girl with us who's still a really good friend of mine. She was the world championship baton twirler for the USA four times in a row. So she can twirl these batons like fucking nobody's business, okay? And she, like I said, she won it for the U.S. four times in a row. And um, or she was like, I can do this on fire. And I said, you can do it on fire. Let's see this shit. And she, she showed me, and she was juggling them and dropping in the splits and twirling these things on fire all crazy fast and I was just it was the coolest thing so I thought okay we need to do more of this because the crowd really loved it so I I linked up with one of the um, predominant members of the circus community out here in Atlanta her name is Connie she's still one of my girls today Um, she's brilliant and um, she's really well known in the aerial community and in the fire arts community too so she um She's my kind of little daredevil. She's the one that you'll see swinging from the rafters uh, for the most part. She's just beautiful in the air. And she, this poor girl, I always like 
hey, like, I'll come up with this idea. I'm like, can you, like, for instance, we built a fire cube, right? It's an aerial cube. It's, we rig it from the ceiling. It's in the shape of a cube. And okay. I thought, okay, that, that's cool, but can we, can we add fire to that cube somehow? She's like, <laughs> I don't know. So I got with a welder, and I'm, I kind of engineered this thing. And um, we figured out a way to add fire brackets to it. And then I was like, okay, Connie. And they always hate me for this part. I'm like, can you do it in heels? <laughs> God damn it, Alicia. Fine. <laughs> now that changes everything, right? I mean, that's the make or break. Can it be done in heels? Oh, yeah. I'm always asking them, can you do that on fire? And then, can you do it in heels? And then they're like, can you do it spinning 10 more plates? I don't know, Alicia. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just constantly pushing them to do something different so um yeah it's weird but it comes out of my head sometimes <laughs> now how about like when you're going on tour now like and i know you guys went on tour before with um it was buck cherry and black stone cherry it was like hey, the whole cherry yeah. tour going on now so when yeah. you go on tour i mean it's it's not just you girls i mean do you have to bring somebody along to be like uh like your stage manager to like assist with the setup and everything, make sure everything's safe for you guys each night? So uh, the first tour that we did with Buck Cherry and Black Jack Cherry, that was our first national tour. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Um, <laughs> just kind of winged it. And we had nobody. I drove us in a 15-passenger van, and oh. we had no stage hands. We were self-contained. We didn't even have a merch person. We didn't have anything. It was just oh. us six girls. Um, Mormon van and, a, and the road, you know, and we piled up in that bitch and we just went for it. That's hardcore. And so we do. Yeah, it was really hardcore. I remember I fell asleep on the floor of the van at one point and woke up with like Dorito crumbs all over my face from like the baseboard <laughs> to the van. It was freaking uh, gnarly, but you know, but uh, you got to pay your dues, you know. So, hell yeah. Um, yeah, and we were like, we got to hang with these rock and roll bands. You know, they think we're all just these little prissy little girls. You know, we got to gotta prove ourselves here. So um, we do all of our loading and unloading. We do all of our own rigging. Um, oh, sure. We take care of all of our own, like, fire safety, everything like that. Like, nobody, you know, we don't hire anybody. Um, but this tour coming up is much, much, but much bigger. So I actually have hired a tech to come assist. Um, and her, and I, I got a bus this time, so we have a driver. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it shows that you guys are growing. Yeah, that that's good. Definitely, yeah. I would say you know doing what we do in this rock industry is fairly new. Um, there certainly has been many dance groups before that do like a rock and roll kind of. Um, theme you know there, there's been a ton of groups in LA and, and New York and stuff that have been doing it for for much longer than me um, right. but at this level it's I, I feel like it's it's somewhat becoming a new thing um, so we're very very grateful for the chance to go on a second national tour now because we're really excited for people to kind of experience rock and metal music in a completely different way yeah, I mean that. Uh, I this like there's another group going around too, and I, I think this is like the new thing now. And uh, like it had me actually thinking. I'm like, if you would have did this maybe 20 years ago, or maybe even 30 years ago, like in, in the height of the you know 80s uh, hair band craze or whatever, like you would think to yourself, like I, I don't know if it would go over as much. Yeah, with the guys it would go over, but I don't know if it would go over with the girls as much. But I think the scene today, it goes over with both girls and guys equally as much. Yeah. Um, you certainly have to be, I think women in general are, are a lot more discerning and picky when it comes to things that um, they like and they don't usually, you know, with guys, no offense or anything, but you know, if you're hot, you're hot, you know, and, and a lot <laughs> of the guys, they're like, I don't care what the fuck she's doing. She's hot, you know, but um, we, we certainly, love that and but we really appreciate the audience member that can see what we're doing and see what what it really is um we find that 
we find that when we can win uh, respect of our female audience members, that, that makes us super happy and super proud. Um, so, yeah, I, I think if you're going to win over a female audience, you got to bring it, man. You have to be impressive. You can't just be, you know, certainly a pretty face is appreciated, but you have to bring some raw in your face talent. You know, you got to make those people in that audience go, holy shit, you know? So I try and keep that in mind whenever we're building a show. I try and think like, this kind of goes back to like doing things on fire and in heels. It's like, I don't want anybody in the audience to look at us and just be like, I could do that, you know? It just—it should be something that's that's hard. And and, and the heels sets it apart from everybody else. <laughs> and the heels, yeah, heels just makes it you know sexy. Let's just put a little sexiness on it. Yeah, no. but um, definitely, it's becoming a thing. It's it's cool. It's exciting. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, and people need to check it out. Like, um, there's a bunch of videos going around. I was watching them today, and actually, I came across. Um, the video for you. you guys have an indie go go going as well. Go go going. How we do. <laughs> yeah, so, we have an indie go go. <laughs> now, when you put that together, like whenever people do these things, like the the, the question I always got to ask is, were you nervous or scared putting it together? Like, oh shit! Like if we do this and nobody gives us anything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, dude, fuck yeah! I was like. I almost backed out. I was like, guys, like, this is not a good idea. Like, th- this isn't going to do anything. This is going to suck. I just, and, and, you know, I'm kind of like, got to get out of that mode. I'm kind of a natural born pessimist, I think. So I'm like, you know, I, I just don't think this, I, I don't want to, I don't want to look like we're begging people. You know, times are tough already as it, as it is for people and, and, you know, for me, like, whenever I see Indiegogos, unless it's a cause I really believe in or somebody, you know, has some some really big needs, you know, I usually don't really pay that close of attention unless it's something that kind of hits home for me. So I was like, this isn't going to resonate with anybody. We're going to raise, like, 250 bucks, and then that's it, you know. And while I would certainly be very, very grateful for that 250 bucks, I just, it, it would just, I don't know, it just made me feel weird, you know. Sure, sure. And, um, yeah, and I just wasn't really about it for a really long time. And then my girls were just like, dude, I think you're going to be really surprised. Just just put it out there. She's like, I think more people believe in this than you think. And I was kind of like, okay, fine, you know. And yeah. uh, and we did it. And, and we, you know, we did a big push at the beginning, and I kind of, like, backed off a little bit because I don't want to be up everybody's ass about it. But sure. we've done so much better than I thought we were. Like very, very, very grateful. And just very I mean, we're only ten percent of the way of our goal, but I'm so thankful for everything. Like just didn't even see that happening. So it's a win already in my book, you know? Yeah, I mean people I mean it, it's a business investment. I mean I mean you you're trying to run a business here and you're looking for people to help you, you know, keep your business going on the road. And like you say on the video, I, I mean, you got bills to pay on the road. It's not, I think, I think people, like you said, like you were guys wearing a 15 pass in your van first time around. I think people just think like, Oh, you're going on tour and you're going to be getting paid all this money. And it's not the case at all. And, you know, you got to you know, beg, borrow and steal for every dollar. And most of that money is going to be coming from your merch stand at the end of the night. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's the other thing people don't realize is like, When you go to a concert, you've got to buy merch, man. Like, buy those CDs. If you can, you know, hold off from downloading the CDs right away and buy them at the merch booth if you're going to go to a concert soon, you know, Um, because that's going to give that artist more money for their music. And with us, we're not a band, so we don't have, like, a big way to monetize us when we're not on the road actively performing. Right. So... Yeah, like you, we don't have like an album that you can just buy wherever and, and that we can raise money that way. You know, we have merch and stuff, but if we're not actively performing on the road, we're not really making any money. So, um, so yeah, until I figure out a way to do that, you know, definitely support, support any way you can, for sure. Sure. Yeah, so people need to go Indiegogo and look up the Cherry Bombs. 
and uh, yeah, do it. Donate yeah, some money. help us afford pants. <laughs> yeah, put some gas in that tank over there for them. <laughs> have you guys yeah, ever come? But, um, to, have you guys ever come to Philadelphia? I don't think you have. Uh, to Philly, no. Yeah, no, nope, we have so. never been to Philly. Nope. I would love to go. I would absolutely love to go. Yeah, we got to make that happen. Tell uh, tell Corey to make a beeline on the tour and uh, stop over to Philly. Yeah, come on, Corey. <laughs> Change all the run. Yeah, we'll be coming through um, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I think that's the closest. Right. We'll be. Okay. Because right after that, we got to head up to Niagara Falls. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Little... Yeah. The routing's kind of crazy on this one. We go from like Louisville, Kentucky to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to Niagara Falls and then over to South Dakota. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Yeah. We're, yeah, so we we're need gas money. all over. Yeah. We need gas money. Oh, my God. <laughs> we need gas money and coffee. Yes, absolutely. But I I love Pennsylvania. We were out when we were at Buckshire. We were out there in Stroudsburg, and that's a super cool city. We had yeah, a blast know, out there. I've never been out to the to uh, the Stroudsburg Theater, which is probably where you guys were. And I, I hear so many great things about that place all the time. Yeah, actually, I have to say, out of all the stuff on our tour last year, that was probably my favorite show. The people. The people just, for me, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I just love the Northeast. I think it's great. I love the people up there. Um, everybody up there just seems to really love rock and roll. And so for that particular show out there in Stroudsburg, everyone showed up early. And by the time we hit the stage, I mean, they were just, they were yelling cherry bombs, chanting it. And we were like, right. how the fuck do these people know who we are? Like, <laughs> we're nobody, you know? But they yeah. were, and they they were an awesome, awesome crowd. So, like, I love it up there. Anytime we get a chance to perform up there, we're there. We were we were just up there for Gettysburg Bike Week um, in yeah. July. Okay. We do a lot of motorcycle rallies. So um, we were coming through up there. But, yeah, but we could get over to Philly for sure. Absolutely. Now, yeah. With, um, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Cheesesteaks. Yeah. Still. yeah. <laughs> Don't got to twist my arm. Now, how the tour hook up with you guys with uh, with Stone Sour? So, um, Corey actually, when he saw us do our stuff with Buck Cherry, he thought I could make this work. You know, he thought it was cool. Um, he really, really, really dug it, and um, he reached out to me early, early in the year, this year, and was like, hey, do you want to go on a tour? And, I mean, I first of all, I shit, and then after I got done shitting, I was like, okay, let me see if I can check my schedule, and then after I was like, yep, fuck it, let's go, and he was, <laughs> he was just like, yeah, man, we're going to make this killer rock and roll lineup. It's going to be the rock tour of the year. It's you, me, and Steel Panther. And when he said Steel Panther, I was just like, yes, this is perfect. It's like a variety show. You know, you've got Stone Sour, you've got Steel Panther. It's like a comedy show in itself. And they're so am- they're such amazing musicians. And then you've got us. Like, it's just a really, really cool, interesting, different lineup. It's going to be a really cool show that people haven't seen before. Yeah, I'm, I'm really bummed that it's not coming to Philly. I, I, when it was first announced, I was like, oh, what a freaking tour. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, motherfucker's not coming to Philly. <laughs> right? I mean, can you make it out? Can you make the drive? You know what? Let me, what is the date here? How far is it? Bethlehem, I think, is about two hours from me. Okay. That's a little bit of a haul. It's a little haul. It's let, a little let haul. Me, let me do some investigating. Let me see, let me see what I can make Yeah. Because that would be super cool, you know, for you to come check it out. Love to have you. Oh, hell yeah. 
Hell yeah. Yeah. So, now, let, me, um, let me ask you this, because I saw that yeah. you grew up uh, like in the grunge height of Seattle. You grew up in Seattle. Um, yeah. Did you ever get a chance by chance to see one of my all-time favorite bands, Mother Love Bone? I did not. Oh. Everybody loves Mother Love Bone. How can That's you know? That's so cool. I haven't heard that name in forever. <laughs> oh, that's like old school. That's showing my age. How how old are you? Forty seven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's super cool. Um, I did not get a chance. You know, when I was growing up there, I I got I didn't really get a chance to go to a ton of concerts as a as a young kid. I would try and, like, sneak away and go see them. Um, but I never really got the ch- got the chance to see any of the greats, you know, the greats out of the grunge scene. I mean, I remember seeing bands like Seven Dust, like, way, way back in the day. And they're not, I mean, they're not any, anything from Seattle by any means. But, like, right. just kind of more bands like that, you know. Um, and then... When I was 18, I moved away from Seattle, so I really didn't get... I moved to Hawaii, which there's Holy not very cow. many... Concerts. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not really any concerts in Hawaii, except for, like, Jack Johnson and fucking Jimmy Buffett. So... Um, Love yeah, yeah. So definitely my, my experience with rock music and the whole grunge scene in Seattle was always through, like, the radio. I just remember always hearing... Like Soundgarden and Nirvana and Pearl Jam, Alice Chains, just all of them just constantly, constantly. It was a huge part of my childhood growing up, just never in person, unfortunately. You, you, you want to know a kick in the ass story, real quick? Nirvana story. My probably my biggest concert regret. I had tickets to go see Nirvana. It was 1993. They were coming here to Philly, and they were playing um, University of Pennsylvania College. And me and my buddy had tickets, and we were like, you know what, like, fuck that, we're not going to go. They're playing, like, a college campus, and we were, like, too cool to be, like, on a college campus, we thought. And, like, you know, screw that, we're not going to hang out with all these college kids and blah, blah, blah. And we didn't go. And it was my biggest concert regret ever. (laughs) I was like, you know, a year later, Kurt's blowing his head off. It's like, motherfucker. Oh, man. I'll never forget the day that I found out Kurt Cobain down. I, first of all, I was uh, probably eight years old. Wow. But I specifically remember this, the babysitter at the time. And she, I remember she was just bawling her eyes out. And I was like, you know, she must have been, I don't know, 16, 17. And I was like, why are you crying? She's like, Kurt Cobain died. And she was playing his um, CD. Oh, she was playing Nirvana, and and then she turned on MTV, and I saw, I remember seeing Kurt Loder there, yeah. and it's just one of those really vivid memories of a young kid, just seeing that and, like, listening to her tell me about, you know, Nirvana, because as an eight-year-old, you know, you don't, I wasn't really too in tune with it at the time, um, <laughs> But I said, yeah, but then I was, I'll, I'll never forget, I'll never forget that day. It was so crazy. And then, I, you know, as an adult, you know, you grow up and you, you really fall in love with all that music um, in, a, in a completely different way than when you're a child. You, um, those kind of things just resonate with you. You know, it's crazy. Now, what is the, um, like, if you guys have a crowd that's not into it or a dead crowd, do you have like a tune that you like go to to try to get the crowd pumped up? <laughs> well, we don't um, we don't play live music, so unfortunately, like if the show's going to shit, the show's gonna go to shit. You know, <laughs> uh, it's a it's, it's a track. So yeah, um, yeah w- if I ever notice, and this does happen, I think this happens for every performer or artist that does a live show. If at any point you feel like the crowd is just kind of like looking at you like, what the fuck? It makes me, personally, it makes me perform 
like 10 times even harder than I normally go. Like, right. it's almost like I'm like, I'm going to make you watch, going to make you love this. And maybe if you don't, okay, whatever, but at least I'm going to, I'm going to hold your attention. You got to win them over. But yeah. You got to win them over. Yeah. You, you, you just, you can't because too, you know, not everybody in that crowd's going to, going to hate you. There, you're going to have people there that are just, that do really like you. I, I highly doubt there's ever a time for any performer where everyone in that audience is just like, this sucks. Right. There's got to be someone in there. Maybe they're really drunk. I don't know, but they've got to be <laughs> loving it. So You got to find that you know, one person. You got to find that one person and connect with them and then it'll spread. And it's funny you ask that. Um, I don't know if you know, Chris Jericho and I, um, have been have become really close friends and he and I were talking um about that we were like you know I asked him I said what do you what do you do whenever a crowd's just kind of like you know what's going on here he said he told me a story about how he ran into Ronnie James Dio in in a hallway and they and they were discussing the same thing and Ronnie said um you know what no matter how many people are in the audience or how little people are in the audience or maybe some people just kind of aren't feeling it, never, ever, ever take away from the experience of, of the people who are there to see you and the people who are digging it. Don't ever take away from their experience. So don't give right. them a shitty performance. Don't complain. You know, don't, like, not be into it because maybe majority of them aren't or maybe a lot of people didn't show up. Like, you got to give more then. Sure. I, I thought that was really cool, and um, I I kind of take that with me wherever I go now. That's awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So, where can everybody go to learn about the Cherry Bombs? Find these tour dates and uh, just truly be educated and uh, see this party. Well, um, you can check out the website. It's www.cherrybombs.co. Co. Um, you can check out our Facebook. It's at Cherry Bombs Official, or our Instagram, Cherry Bombs Official, there as well. On Twitter, we're on Cherry Bombs Rock. Um, so we're kind of all over social media and the interwebs. And also, too, if you come to any of our shows, or if anybody comes to our shows, if they bring a non-perishable food item, or something like diapers, or baby formula, or dog food, we're going to be rolling down to Houston and Corpus Christi on this tour in about mid-October. And so if you bring one of that, any of those items, anything that we can help donate to the people of um, uh, Houston and Corpus Christi area that got affected by Hurricane Harvey, you'll get 10% off of our merch, and then we're going to personally deliver all of that to the local food banks and the local organizations down there um, awesome. and get our feet on the ground out there and help them clean up. Because, you know, when the big people move out, you know, like the Red Cross, they still need support. They still need help. So it's really important to us to get down there and, and help out as much as we can. So try to spread the word about that for sure. Absolutely. That's awesome. Great job there. Yeah. Hey, I saw that, you know, and now our friends in Florida, it's like, Oh man. Yeah, actually, I, I actually, I do, I do have two co-hosts and they're very quiet, usually during the interviews. And uh, one of my co-hosts is actually in Florida. And we were just, uh, we spent like the first half of the show, uh, before you came on, getting all the details of Hurricane Irma from him, how he survived it. Where is he at? What part of Florida? Janetti. What part of Florida are you? You're West Palm Beach? He's probably on mute. I think he said he was like 20 minutes from there. Yeah, 20 miles outside okay. of West Palm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, as I just I hate it. I just hate it. You know, it's a natural disaster. You, there's nothing you can really do. Kind of prepare as much as you can. But, man, Barbuda, Cuba, Puerto Rico, I mean, they got rocked, too. I mean, I mean if anything, just, yeah, do anything you can to help because they need it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the people track, yeah. track them down, bring uh, – Non-perishables, please, and uh, yep. and then donate to their Indiegogo because now they're going to be weighing down the bus and it's going to use more gas. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to need more gas cards, so. <laughs> Find that Indiegogo and uh, donate to the Cherry Bombs <laughs> and uh, bring non-perishables. And then buy their merchandise, too, because most importantly, they need more gas and money in the in the tank at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and maybe if we collect so much food, we might need a trailer. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> donate Donate a trailer to us while you're at it. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. God, these poor people, they're like, God, Sherry Bombs, what the fuck you want now? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, well, honestly, anything else. We're just happy that people are willing to to see us and, you know, clap at the end of our show. I'll take that. So oh, yeah. It's really great. Everything. Yeah. So That's I really, lot. really hope you get to make it out to a show, man. I think that'd be super cool. Yeah, definitely. I'll I'll uh, I'll let you know. I'll hit you up on a. Uh, no, we're not friends on Facebook, but I'll hit you up on Facebook or whatever, and uh, I'll keep you updated. Yeah, please do. Cool. Well, thank you so much for doing this, and uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And we'll talk to you guys soon. You got it. See ya. Thank you, babe. Bye. Bye, y'all.